Sergei Skripal, who is a 66-year-old uh, man. He was a former colonel in the uh, Russian military who was convicted for handing over uh, information about uh, Russian spies to MI6, the British Foreign Intelligence Agency. And for that, he received a 13-year uh, uh, prison sentence. And uh, But he was released in 2010 as part of a prisoner swap. And, and uh, that was under the former Russian president, Dmitry Medvedev, when he was president. And so he's been living in the United Kingdom since then. Now, it's also important to add that the police also haven't uh, named or said what this substance could potentially be. Now, sources in the UK emergency services have been quoted as saying the former spy may have suffered a prescription drug overdose. His symptoms apparently point to the use of a powerful painkiller called fentanyl. It is a hundred times stronger than heroin and has a similar influence on the body. This might just be some sort of drug incident. Uh, there have been numerous stories over the last couple of years in the UK of the spread of uh, a synthetic cannabinoid called spice, which seems to create the same sort of symptoms that were reported in this case. People who um, are dislocated because they've been involved in a spice swap, for example, their lives are un forever changed. Uh, there's a long history of people in that situation self-medicating with substances. This happened, they were taken to hospital, they were identified, their names were fed into the system, and as soon as their, their names were fed into the system, there was some alert around the fact that this guy had indeed been involved in the spy swap in 2010. Um, so suddenly it became much more, uh, much more newsworthy. I think this is where this story is built from. He was a former colonel in the uh, Russian military. Have you moved on? Have you moved on from the truth? So whilst we're now in a position to confirm, in a position to confirm that their symptoms are as a result of exposure to a nerve agent. I will not be providing further information at this stage about the exact substance that has been identified. Earlier on, the Home Secretary, Amber Rudd, uh, she chaired a, a COBRA meeting, which is a, a highly unusual step in itself. It normally only happens in response to sort of national crises like terrorist attacks or things like major floods. We need to keep a cool head and make sure that we collect all the evidence we can. And we need to make sure that we respond not to rumor, but to all the evidence that they collect. And then we will need to decide what action to take. Uh, at this stage, they're very much going to be in the securing of evidence uh, phase, doing all the, the local inquiries, doing all the crime scene examination and stuff like that. Um, and, and then they'll see what they've got and where that, that then takes them. We tend in this country not to sort of do a blow-by-blow -blow account of investigations. Uh, information is provided by the police to the public via the media for various yeah, reasons. But I think Well, these latest revelations raise major questions about who was behind the plot to kill the two. Not anybody can manufacture, can handle nerve agent. You have to know what you're doing. The UK Foreign Secretary vowed that if any foreign power is found responsible, the UK will respond, quote, robustly. That's right. One of the things we know about Russia is that, uh, that, that it has, you know, the Russian state has a poison factory outside Moscow, which is devoted to the research and development of obscure chemical and biological weapons for specific use in targeted assassinations.
Phil Black in Salisbury, we saw some CCTV footage um, uh, there of uh, right before the incident uh, there in Salisbury. You have to ask yourself two things uh, before we get the forensic evidence is why now, why in advance of the presidential elections in Russia and why in advance of the World Cup? It seems a difficult time to be doing it. So, um, let me turn to you, Alexander Nekrasov. I mean, you're a former Kremlin advisor. Well, first of all, I'd like to say that nobody yet knows what happened. But unfortunately, the British government has already decided what happened. Uh, Boris Johnson says, uh, I am not pointing fingers, and then he points fingers. Uh, you can't use that sort of language and say, well, we are waiting for the investigation to uh, finish. Unfortunately, uh, the Russians see this as a campaign against Russia, because the way the media behaves, the way the politicians behave, nothing is yet known, nothing has been discovered. The reaction was too much. It was over-the-top reaction. What I find bizarre myself about the Kremlin's reaction is that the spokesman for President Putin says, we are prepared to help. How on earth is he going to help? The, the man well, was like here for eight too. years. <laughs> no, no, but this is silly, what he's saying, because the man was under protection of MI5, I, I'm supposing, I don't know. So it's probably the questions are to MI5, what he was doing, what, whom he was connected to. The point is... If his daughter was allowed to visit him from Moscow, that means Russian intelligence was of no, he was of no interest to them. Why in advance of the presidential elections in Russia and why in advance of the World Cup? Unfortunately, uh, the Russians see this as a campaign against Russia. If his daughter was allowed to visit him from Moscow, that means Russian intelligence was of no... He was of no interest to them. If he was killed by the FSB or, or uh, part of the intelligence apparatus in, in Russia, the question is why. They wouldn't have done it just for revenge. They would have been thinking that maybe he was active again as, as a spy. I say that um, if you have a military, military intelligence officer, Russian military intelligence officer, working in the Russian diplomatic service, living after retirement in the UK, working in cybersecurity, and every month going to the embassy to meet military intelligence officers, for me, being a political refugee, it is either a certain danger or, um, frankly speaking, I thought that uh, this contact may be not very good for me because it, that it can, um, you know, uh, bring some questions from British uh, officials. Putin, from my point of view, can't be behind this.
clear that Mr. Skripal and his daughter were poisoned with a military-grade nerve agent of a type developed by Russia. Now, Novichok, the nerve agent mentioned by the UK Prime Minister, is a binary gas, meaning it contains a mixture of elements. It was secretly developed by the Soviet Union in the 1980s. Russia is innocent. Russia is ready to cooperate according to the Chemical Weapons Convention if the United Kingdom bothers and condescends to abide by its own international obligations under that convention. We are waiting for the United Kingdom to respond to a request that we filed in accordance with the very same convention about the necessity to provide us with the substance in question and the necessity to make the whole investigation open to us, because we are talking about a Russian citizen. We are not backing down. This is an act of terrorism and all members of parliament should stand together. When ultimatums are made, such as the one that Theresa May has made, it is to my mind, a sign that the British government doesn't have the evidence yep. that points to Russia. Because if it did, why would it challenge the Russians to prove their innocence in that kind of way? We are not backing down. This is an act of terrorism. I wish Rex Tillerson well. Word just coming in of a Russian who was a critic of, of Vladimir Putin found dead in his home in London. Cause of death is not given uh, at this particular point. Now, the same statement from the police says that at this point they do not believe there is any link to the events of Salisbury. Give you a little bit of background history here. Mr. Glushkov was an associate of a, uh, a, a, what you call an oligarch, a, a very rich Russian businessman called Boris Berezovsky, who himself was kind of a kingmaker in the 90s. Many say responsible, in fact, for part of Vladimir Putin's uh, move into the Russian elite. But Berezovsky fell out with uh, the Kremlin moved to London and a series of corruption cases uh, launched by his then enemies in the Kremlin followed him here. Also followed Mr Glushkov. Mr Glushkov was accused and sought for extradition from the United Kingdom uh, to Russia because of accusations he'd embezzled uh, millions of dollars from the Russian state airline Aeroflot. Now he was sentenced uh, in absentia on a number of occasions, did some actually some jail time in Russia on various charges and found himself here in the United Kingdom. She promotes herself endlessly on social media as Nastia Ribka, a kind of self styled Russian sex guru who will supposedly teach you the art of seduction. She brags of liaisons with billionaires, and one billionaire in particular. These are the images that have thrust Nastia Ribka into the kind of spotlight she didn't expect. It shows her relaxing on a boat with two men. One of them is Oleg Deripaska, one of Russia's richest men. The other, a senior Russian official, Deputy Prime Minister Sergei Prihodka. Russia's main opposition leader seized on the images as evidence of official corruption, also suggesting the two men, who can be heard discussing US-Russia relations, 
may have served as a link between the Kremlin and the Trump campaign. Prihodkar has refused to comment on the allegation. Deripaska has dismissed it as a story far from any truth. She was arrested by Thai police for violating the terms of her tourist visa, managing to record this quick, tantalising message aimed at the American media as she was driven away. I'm ready to give you all the missing pieces of the puzzle, support them with videos and audio regarding the connections of our respected lawmakers with Trump, Manafort and the rest. I know a lot. I'm waiting for your offers in a Thai prison. In the deep cold of a Russian winter, when the Neva River turns into a playground for the people of St. Petersburg, they are choosing Russia's next leader. The Tsars built their capital here, confident their rule would last forever. It didn't, but power doesn't change hands often in these parts, and it's not about to now. Vladimir Putin! The man who's ruled for the last 18 years is up for re-election, but he's barely campaigning. A rally alongside Russia's medalists from the Winter Olympics is about all Vladimir Putin's bothering with, while a hand-picked selection of opposition candidates hold staged TV debates designed, it seems, to confirm their unsuitability for high office. <inaudible> Navalny's supporters are urging Russians to simply not vote. They know they can't beat Putin, but if they can lower the turnout, they believe they can undermine his legitimacy. In spray paint, they write the word boycott across election posters, all the time the police shadowing and watching. Have you moved on? Have you moved on from the truth? Iran is our traditional and reliable partner in the region.